And joining me now is Ambassador Sven Jurgensen, the permanent representative from Estonia to the United Nations, who was, I believe, in New York ambassador for the General Assembly meetings, of the U all of the UN meetings, the debate over that resolution. So I want to play what we heard this morning from the UN representative for Ukraine when discussing Vladimir Putin. If he wants to kill himself, he doesn't need to use nuclear arsenal. He has to do what the, same, what, what the guy in, in Berlin did in a bunker in May 1945. We do not accept the Russian logic that the Security Council was unable to act due to one-sided and unbalanced approach. The only guilty party is the Russian Federation. Ukraine's ambassador has been very pointed uh, with his sharp comments to the Russian ambassador when, when he was sitting as president of the Security Council, of course, on Friday. So give us a sense of this debate and the importance of this resolution in support of Ukraine. Well, thank you, Andrea, for having me here. Uh, I think this is a moment that uh, most of uh, UN member states understand that this is a defining moment for the organization. This, actually, the, the future of the, the UN Charter and the organization itself depends on what we are doing right now. If you remember the, the fall of League of Nations that was created after the First World War in order never to see again a global war, then it failed because Germany and Soviet Union attacked Poland and Finland. Now, 76 years, this organization has been successful. But we are at a defining moment. We are at a 1939 moment. And when you also, when I listened to the Secretary General, I think in the history of this organization, the Secretary General of, of United Nations has never been so clear how dangerous the situation is. And from the perspective of the Baltic states, uh, newer members of NATO, and certainly you know, on the, the front lines here, do you have everything that you need? Are you getting everything you need from Germany, from the U.S., France, U.K., in terms of building up your military? And how worried are you about the spilling over? Uh, I think at the moment we see a real development of understanding where we are. The unity that we are seeing at the moment is just spectacular. I think the potential that European Union had, for example, it's been visible now. This is a moment for unity and transatlantic unity, European Union unity, and, and we are seeing this. There are massive, ma massive moves of, of more equipment also to, to support the eastern flank of NATO. And when Putin wanted to split up the European Union or NATO, we can right now see how wrong he was. This is exactly what, what is happening right now, actually, what he didn't want to see. And, and at the same time, you know, we have, we have a military uh, support coming in, but there is also, if you look at the unity of the sanctions and everything, I think you can really, during the last few days, we can see how much people understand where we are. I was a bit frustrated a few days ago or, or a week ago when we were talking about sanctions, and there is a lot of talk, talk how the sanctions will hurt us as well. And... I, I was always saying, of course, it will hurt us as well. But if we understand what kind of a defining moment it is, we have to remember what Winston Churchill said in 1939. He promised his nation blood, toil, sweat and tears. But he also s promised that we will prevail. And this is the very similar moment. And, and when I'm, I'm looking at the heroic resistance by the, the, the Ukrainians, who are actually right now fighting and dying for all of us, when I'm looking at the unity of, of, of uh, transatlantic and European nations, but at the same time, I think what is also necessary at the moment to understand, when we talk about unity, it shouldn't only be among countries, but I think we are too polarized, both here in, in the United States, but also in my, my home country, in European countries. I think in this kind of a, a situation, we have to wake up and understand our small bickerings on small issues that are so normal in a normal democratic situation, we should forget them and stand united against a great evil.
We've certainly seen a big change in policy in Germany arming Ukraine, now Switzerland agreeing to the financial sanctions, something they've never done before. Now, Zelensky has, you know, posted a picture of him signing uh, and posting his application for EU membership. I know he is uh, years away from NATO membership, that the consensus there. What does he have to do to get EU membership? Well, EU membership finally is a long process. We went through this. EU is a very complicated organization. But at the moment, I think what is really necessary is to get a strong political signal from the European Union that, uh, that Ukraine is welcome in the European Union to start the process. If we remember, then actually in 2014, where it all started was that the Ukrainian people wanted to have a European perspective. And it was Yanukovych who, with pressure from Moscow, took a step back. And, and finally, that led to Maidan, that led to everything that we are seeing right now. But at the same time, what Russia also has to understand in this context is that when they don't want NATO to move closer to their borders, then actually NATO is not moving anywhere. It's countries who want to join. I was ambassador in Washington from 2000 to 2003 and trying to convince Washington and also other NATO members to accept us as a NATO member. And I remember how hard it was to fight even the language when people were talking about NATO expansion. It was not NATO expansion, it was NATO enlargement because countries wanted to join. And Putin has to look into the mirror and ask himself, why do all his neighbors want to join? And if you look at the round Russia that has numerous neighbors, and the, the interesting question is, if you look at around Russia, Russia has bad relations with all its neighbors. Not one of them, not two of them, not even three of them. The only country that we could say maybe they have normal relations is a country that is not even sovereign anymore, and that is Belarus. How much of a sovereign country is Belarus at the moment? But I think when, of course, for normal accession to European Union, it is a very long process, even the start of it. But I think Ukrainians have, have uh, got this right, and they have earned the right with the heroic fight that they are doing right now. They have earned the right with their blood. Well, Ambassador, your perspective is so important. Thank you. I should just point out, there's just been... Uh, uh, reported Poland's uh, foreign minister has tweeted that they support the ascension to the EU by their Ukrainian colleagues of Poland and, and all of you border countries are being so heroic. Thanks so much, Ambassador Jovensen.